Hey, grade six. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the clans in the Iroquois Confederacy. Um, we mentioned them a little bit, but I think the big piece that's different from the clans and the nations are the nations are the actual territories that people lived on, whereas the clans were, if you remember from our second page of our booklet, they were the nine animal clans. And when you were part of the same clan, that meant that you were all members of the same family. So if you had somebody in the bear clan, maybe they had a cousin or an aunt that was also in the bear clan, but they don't necessarily live in the same nation. Our nations are the Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, um, Mohawk, and Tuscarora. So again, our clans, that's just your extended relatives. So instead of having last names, where that would show that you're all part of the same family in the Iroquois Confederacy, they had clans to show that they were all members of the same family. So you might remember that there were the nine animal clans and they were chosen from the air, the land and the water. So probably from previous years, you would remember that um, for Aboriginal communities are really connected with nature. And that's kind of one of the things that came up with in their family names as well. So the first one we'll look at is the snipe. And when I think about snipe, I always immediately think of the movie Up. I you that. Hey, that is a bird. I have never seen one up close, but this is a bird. May I take your bird back to camp as my prisoner? Yes, yes, take it. And on the way, learn how to bark like a real dog. Oh, I could bark. <coughs> and here's howling. <coughs> Can we keep him, please, please, please? No. What is a talking dog? So that's the snipe that they have in the um, movie Up. What an actual snipe looks like is just this little bird here. They've still got the long beak on them, like the snipe that they have in Up, but they're a little bit smaller. Um, one of the other animal clans or kind of the last name that they would use would be Hawk. And we also had the heron in the Iroquois Confederacy, and they're the ones that like to go in water, they've got those kind of big awkward long legs. So those were the three clans or family names that they had from the air. Then we also had the three from the land. So the three land animals that they chose to have for clan names were the deer, the wolf, and the bear. Okay, then we also had the three animal clans from the water. This is, and remember that they were living next to Lake Ontario. So they actually have these big, I found this picture and I had to share it with you guys because it's a big scary looking eel. And apparently these are the type of eels that they find in the Great Lakes in Canada, which I had no idea. So I had to show you guys that one, he's pretty creepy. Then they also had the turtles and of course the little beavers. I'll pull my way, head out of your way. Okay, so those were the nine animal clans. And again, if you were part of the same clan, it meant that you were part of the same family. Okay, so the peacemaker, you might remember him. That was the guy that we helped create the How Denishoni from that cartoon we watched, created these nine animal clans to create unity and harmony. So a big piece with the unity and harmony is you can see on this chart, we've got all of the nations, well, the original five nations were missing the Tuscarora because they came on much later, going downwards in this chart. And the, of those nine clans that we just talked about, they go across. So how this chart works is it kind of shows you which clans lived in which nation. So you can see that there was a wolf clan in every single nation in this, the uh, Iroquois Confederacy. And there's a bear clan in every single nation and a turtle clan in every single nation. Um, when we get to that snipe, they only had clans or families that lived in the Seneca and the Cayuga. The deer only had clans that lived in Seneca and Onondaga and so on. One that's kind of interesting is the eel clan. The eel clan only lived in Onondaga territory and they actually had the highest population as well, which is why you would find more clans there. You can notice here and same with Seneca. They've got a lot of clans living there. They had a lot of uh, people living in those nations as well. So when we say that they created harmony and unity, I want to show you the guys what I mean by that. So. For example, if we had um, a man from the wolf clan marrying a woman from the turtle clan, you guys might remember that family names actually get passed down by the woman. So if they fall in love, then they are going to go and they're gonna move into the woman's longhouse and move in with her family. And from then on, all of their children are gonna be members of the turtle clan. So kind of, it's opposite of what we have. We have a patriarchal society in which we pass down 
uh, or a patrilineal society in which we passed down our last names from the boy side. So I have the last name Smith because my dad's last name was Smith. But when you were in the Iroquois Confederacy, names actually got passed down from the women's side. And we call that a matrilineal society. And that so she, because she was a member of the Turtle Clan, all of their kids would become members of the Turtle Clan and they would all live together in the longhouse. So the only time that then they would start changing around is say maybe we had one of their children who was a member of the Turtle Clan fall in love with a woman from the Deer Clan. So as you might guess, all of their children from that point are going to be members of the Deer Clan and they are gonna then move into the Deer Clan longhouse. And that, that boy is now going to leave the Turtle Clan and join the Deer Clan. So something that's kind of neat with this is you weren't allowed to marry somebody that was in the same clan, just like you wouldn't marry somebody in the same in your same family, you couldn't marry somebody that was in the same clan. So every time someone got married, then they would have to marry somebody from a different clan. And the really great part about that is, now if you think about that original couple that we started with up here, they've got family ties now to the Wolf Clan, the Turtle Clan, and the Deer Clan. So they've got families all across the different nations. So if we come back to this chart here, so because that family now has loyalty to those clans, they're unlikely to wage war on these nations. And that's just three clans, and now they're not gonna wage war on these nations. And the reason they're likely not going to wanna get into a fight with those nations, besides being in the Confederacy, is they've also got family living in every single one. Just from those three clans, you can see all the different family that's gonna be spread out across those different areas. So that's kind of the big piece of how the Peacemaker created harmony and unity, is harmony is just another way of saying peace. My head's floating around. <laughs> Um, so there's going to be a lot of peace. You're not going to wage war on somebody who's in your family or somebody that's in your same nation. So it created a lot of unity again, together with all of them. And that just means kind of togetherness. So again, I'm just going to show you guys this quick little map here, just a different way of looking at the different clans that would be in different areas. So we've got our territories here set up and then we would have our turtle clan and you can see turtle clan shows up across the map our wolf clan shows up across the map and our bear clan shows up across the map and we've got our snipe our deer our beaver our heron and our hawk and then we've got our last little eel in there so you can see that some nations have way more clans in them and that's because they've got a higher population whereas the mohawk only has three clans in their territory even though it's huge it's got a lower population so you can think about even at the way that our province breaks up our voting districts we've got huge huge areas in northern alberta whereas edmonton has really tiny voting areas and it's always based off of that population and you can find that as you get on <laughs> later on when we talk about how they made decisions in the Iroquois Confederacy. Okay, bye!